Hey, before working as an academic, I used to work on a building site. In fact, I was telling a student once that, uh, you know, I'd built houses and I'd done all of these kinds of things and he looked at me square in the eye and I couldn't believe it. He said to me, Brad, you don't come across as the kind of person who is practical. I thought, oh my goodness, I've got more practical skills than, uh, than, than um, you know, impractical skills, PhD, not that they're impractical. But what it led me to think is that there are a bunch of things that I learned on the building site that apply directly to research. So this talk is about the research skills that I learned on the building site. The first of these is, on a building site, what you'll find is you'll build, you know, you might build your frame, um, and then you're waiting for, um, say, the plumber to come. So what you're doing is you're sitting around waiting. Plumbers are notorious for kind of taking as much time as they like and charging a fortune. And so you'll be sitting around waiting, getting frustrated. And one of the things I very quickly learned is this is the most important time that you have on a building site. The reason being, there's nothing in theory, nothing that you can do while you wait for the trade. And what that does is it forces you to ask yourself the question, have I missed anything? Now, the reason I say this is that as a researcher, particularly as a PhD student, you will often have to wait for your supervisor to get back to you. For very good reason, they're often working 80 to 100 hours a week. Now, you can complain about that, you can sit and bemoan the fact that they're slowing you down, or you can take the opportunity to go, what have I missed? And that is one of the most valuable things. Now, what have I missed is one question, but also what are the things that I can do in preparation towards the future? So that time of waiting for your trades, your supervisor, your colleagues, is actually hugely important. The second thing relates to this piece of pipe. Now, as a kid, when I was learning on the building side, I always thought this was ridiculous. Um, working with a plumber, you um, are, as a you know, young apprentice, you're often told when you put the glue, this blue stuff, on the pipe to make it neat. Now, as a, a teenager, I remember thinking, that's ridiculous, because the very first thing I'm going to do once this pipe is glued is stick it in the ground, no one's ever going to see it. So who cares whether it's neat or not? The reason this is really, really important is because the very process of making that glue neat makes sure that you don't miss anything. When you're doing a PhD, when you're doing research, you can often fall into the trap of going, okay, I've got a long time. You do something and you go, oh, that, look, that's a problem, um, but I'll fix it later. So maybe you, you badly interpret some research, maybe you don't look at the stats, you just take, heaven forbid, just take the information from the abstract. Um, what I would suggest is, like the glue, that if you do it rough and think, yeah, I'll fix it later, you probably won't and your PhD is gonna leak in the same way that the pipe might leak. So make sure that you do things in a methodical manner. You don't have to get everything perfect on the way through, but do it methodically. So do one thing at a time and work your way through. When you take notes about a journal, make sure that they're accurate. Don't think, oh, I'll double check that later, cause the reality is you won't and you'll forget. The third point is, and this one hurts, you will always fail the building inspection. Okay, at the end of the process, particularly when you're building your own house, you're just desperate to get in, and so you want what's called lockup, and you call the inspector, and they come around with a grumpy look on their face, and they go, you've stuffed up that, and that, and that, and that. You will always fail, unquestionably. Well, that's not entirely true, but most of the time, expect to fail and then take it as a, as, as a bonus if you don't. Now, the reason that this is actually, that I learned something from this, is that when you hand things to your supervisor or your colleagues, their job is to find things that are wrong with it. Okay, that's their job. In fact, having spoken to supervisors, they look at a perfect paper and go, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to work really hard to find something. Because if they don't find something, they feel like they haven't done their job. So if you look at those moments where you've got to send off something to your supervisor or send off an article to a journal, and rather than thinking, oh geez, I hope I get through without any comments, think to yourself, fantastic, because when I get the comments, I've got a list of things that I have to do. It's clear, it's defined, you know what the end of it is. Okay, so when you get feedback from a journal, if they say, look, you know, needs major revision, but if you do these things, then you'll do okay, um, then, then, you know, we're, we're likely to, um, to take it on board, you know what they need. So that's fantastic. Yes, it hurts the ego, but it's absolutely fantastic because you know exactly what needs doing. So these are three skills that I learned on the building site that have really helped me get through the PhD. So remember, waiting is the best thing that can ever happen because it forces you to do the things that you've been avoiding. The glue should always be neat. Make sure that everything you do is methodical. You don't have to finish every paragraph, but be methodical about it. You will always fail the inspection. You will never give your work to a supervisor or journal and get them to send, send it back to you and say, oh my goodness, you're amazing, okay? They're always gonna say, we've got this problem, this problem, this one. That's their job. So be thankful for someone else creating a things to-do list for you. I hope this has been helpful. I um, look forward to seeing you again in the future. See ya.